Every team gets an all-star representative when baseball's best gather this July in Los Angeles for the Midsummer Classic. We're going to tell you which players, yes, players, as in more than one, could be wearing Cincinnati red at Chavez Ravine. We will also get you set for the series against the Milwaukee Brewers that gets underway today at Great American Ballpark. All that and more on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked on Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We have been podcasting about the Cincinnati Reds for going on our fourth season because we've been lifelong addicts. And we've turned that addiction into information for you. Locked on Reds is part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Thanks for making this uh, your first view as well. On today's episode, like Steve mentioned, we got a lot to get into and we are going to start First, Steve, with the all-star conversation, because it's that time of year again. And of course, we're doing the whole, you know, tiered voting thing where we vote once for a million times per player, and then they nominate a number of players, and then we do another round of voting. I don't know. They made it all this weird stuff. But the Reds have a couple of guys, and it starts with Brandon Jury. It absolutely starts with Brandon Drury. I mean, really, if you're having a, if you only get to pick one, he is the one. He's the team leader in home runs. He has been the surprise of the year. And really, uh, at times when this team has been <laughs> I, dark and despairing, I guess maybe <laughs> is the best way to describe it. During those times, he's been the lone bright spot at times, at least offensively. So for me, not only uh, does he deserve it on a, on a personal level for his accomplishments, but what he's meant to the team, I think he deserves to be that person representing the team, uh, wearing that Cincinnati red jersey out in Los Angeles. 100%. And I mean, you can look at the numbers and you can say, all right, he leads the team in home runs. He's done pretty well in that category. But I was even looking the other day, and I think amongst Major League second baseman, I think he would go in as a second baseman anyway. But as Major League second baseman go, he is fourth in weighted runs created plus just absolutely phenomenal. He has been the best scrap heap find that the Reds have had since Scooter Jeanette. I mean, there's no doubt there. And there's been a lot of comparisons between him and Scooter and, you know, talks of Derek Dietrich and things like that. And I think it's really interesting because what you said too about meaning to the team, and I think he's going to continue to mean a lot to this team because he now creates with Jonathan India returning, he now creates a nice platoon situation at third base. He can be the right-handed bat whenever we're facing a lefty so that Moose doesn't have to be run out there and he doesn't have to bat against left-handed pitchers, which he is terrible at doing. And Brandon Jury has been really solid at hitting lefties this year. So I, I think he will continue to retain his value even though you've got a couple of guys that are coming back healthy because he can play the one position. And, and I mean, that barehanded play that he made the other day, Steve, that was just so nice in Arizona told me all I need to know. He's the best defensive third baseman on this roster. So I, I think his value is only going to continue to be there. <laughs> well, that's not a, that's not a bar that's been set very high the <laughs> defensive third baseman for the Reds. But listen, I agree with you. I hear what you're saying, but I want to throw a word of caution at you and, 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 and you are Mr. Optimism. And, and I have seen the narrative surrounding Brandon jury begin to shift a little bit amongst Reds fans and on Twitter and, and just the narrative out there is moving a little bit where people are talking about, well, maybe we should be talking about extending Brandon Drury. No, absolutely not. Listen, you hit the nail on the head. He's the best scrap heap find since Scooter Jeanette. Now, how did that work out for the Reds? Everybody fell in love with Scooter Jeanette. Everybody got attached to him. He became a fan favorite. Everybody was super popular. Uh, he was super popular with everybody, rather. And then all of the sudden, uh, he declined. He went back to normal. He became the guy that he really was after a really great period of time. 
And I think that Brandon Drury is the exact same type of player. And what the Reds cannot afford to do is repeat the same mistakes. You have got to trade Brandon Drury while his value is high. Now, look, I don't want them to trade him tomorrow. I want him to be here through the all-star break. I want him to play the next six weeks doing that thing you just said, platooning at third base, minimizing the exposure we have by running Mike Moustakas out there all the time. Continue to showcase Brandon Drury. And then when the all-star break passes and the trade deadline approaches, you flip him for prospects. You turn him into something valuable for the organization for the next five or six years. You cannot afford to repeat the Scooter Jeanette mistakes and get nothing in return. Yeah, this is something where I, I would like to agree with the people that want to keep him around, but there's a very simple reason as to why not. If you look at the rest of his career so far this year has been a major outlier. I think he is so close to hitting his career total in home runs, and we're not even to the all-star break. You can tell that there's something going, and, and you could say, well, it's because he's getting regular playing time. I don't think so. I think this is an outlier, and I think the Reds need to take advantage of it. And you made the perfect comparison a couple of days ago on the show when you said it's just like Dan Straley. Do that. Mm -hmm. Do what the Reds did with Dan Straley. Turn him into Luis Castillo. Turn him into a Luis Castillo-type prospect. Trade Brandon Jury and get that guy who, you know, two or three years down the road, 2024, whenever we are back good again, then you'll have this dude who's ready to come up and be a huge contributor. Because I think that if we get fixated on the short term sample size, as much as everybody hates to hear this, when it comes to baseball, small sample size, when you're talking about the entirety of a career of a player, you've got to understand it in its own context. And that is the trade value for him has never been higher. It's time to deal now. And listen, Jeff, this is going to be the first big test for this ownership group to see if they're just blowing all the smoke at the fans of the Cincinnati Reds or if they really mean it when they say they want to move to being more like how Tampa does things with baseball operations. Because in the past, Bob Castellini would have nixed any deal for Brandon Drury because he's so popular right now. The, the ownership group would prevent the front office from making any trades because we can't afford to move our popular players. They would do that. If they're serious, if this is, if this is their direction, if they're being genuine in looking for a new way to do things, to bring winning baseball to Cincinnati, this is how you do it. You take these, these you call scrap peep finds. I, I say these, these outlier surprises, you take those guys and you turn them into value. And that's how you do it. You trade Brandon Drury for some prospects. And it's a real test for the Castellinis. Is he going to be able to keep his mouth shut and stay out of the way and let the baseball people do baseball things? Uh, when you did that impression there, I think I like hallucinated for a little bit. I was like, whoa, Bob? Bob? <laughs> Bob? No, no, no. I, I, and look, that's the big picture when it comes to brain and jury. But right now, as Reds fans, we can celebrate the fact that we got this dude who you really should be voting for for NL All-Star Game. He deserves to go to Los Angeles, and I really want to see him do it because I think that he has absolutely played up to that potential this year. You know, there is no question that Brandon Drury is playing fantastic baseball, and we should enjoy it right now. We should enjoy every inning, every game, right up into the trade deadline where we wish him the best as he's turned into those prospects that I was just talking about. Uh, listen, Jeff, Brandon Drury may not be the only player representing the Reds in July in Los Angeles. I know that coming up, you're going to tell us who you think could be a surprise all-star selection for the Cincinnati Reds. And listen, if you want to have all-star level health, you need to get yourself some Athletic Greens AG1 right now. So you're probably asking yourself, what is this stuff? Well, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy level, your ability to recover, how you focus, and get this, it helps fight off aging, Jeff. All of those things. It does them all. Athletic Greens has over 7,000 five-star reviews. It costs less than $3 a day, so you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than that cold brew habit you have when you head to the local coffee shop. 
It's very lifestyle friendly. Whether you're eating keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, AG1 will work for you. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, head over to athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you for making Locked on Reds your first listen. Check out the ultimate NBA mock draft. Locked on NBA brings you the ultimate NBA mock draft. I don't know what just happened there with the copy, but it changed on me. Raphael Barlow from Locked on NBA Big Board is joined by every Locked on NBA host and some NBA insiders from Odyssey to deliver picks and analysis. Locked On does mock drafts better than anyone else, and the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is the perfect example of that. So head over and check that out. Make sure you are following the podcast on all platforms, including YouTube as well. Click that subscribe button if you're watching us there. Uh, if you haven't done that, head over. There's exclusive content for you over there. I've got some interviews with Cam Miller uh, about his Riverfront Remembered project i've got interviews with doug gray and i know jeff's got some stuff coming really soon uh being out and about in the cincinnati area uh coming up tomorrow we're going to uh get into this milwaukee brewer series we'll talk about the results from tonight's game and we'll get you set for the rest of the series as well as start to look towards the mighty los angeles dodgers coming into town all right jeff you told me that Brandon Drury might not be the only representative for the Reds at the All-Star game in Los Angeles. And you have my you have my attention. Who else might be representing the Reds out in Los Angeles? Steve, what is the All-Star game? It is the collection of baseball's best. It is a showcase for Major League Baseball to show the world just how good they are. It's a showcase, right? It's entertainment. It's an exhibition. Let's not kid ourselves. This doesn't count for anything. It's just a lot of fun to watch. You want the most fun players in the game. Hunter Green deserves hmm. to go to the All-Star game. Let me tell you why. You're going to look at his numbers right now. You are going to say, Jeff, what on earth are you talking about? His ERA is over five. Why on earth would an ERA over five head to Los Angeles and get to celebrate the fact that he had a good first half? Let me tell you this. You take out that eight earned run performance in Milwaukee, the five homers that he allowed one game in two and two thirds innings. You take that out. He's got a 4.08 ERA. He has a strikeouts per nine of over 11. He mashes 100 miles an hour on the regular. And if you could tell me that Hunter Green coming in for one inning there in Los Angeles, given the fact that he pitched so well early on this year against the Dodgers, coming in for one inning in the All-Star game, would that not be electric? That would absolutely be electric. And guess what? Fans can't vote on pitchers. This is getting voted in by the coaches, by the players. This is getting voted in by the league. Hunter Green deserves a trip to L.A. Well, statistically, as you just mentioned, no, he does not. B, I don't want him anywhere near this game. Number one, <laughs> we're going to have people that are not in the Reds organization messing with Hunter Green's arm. Number two, you mentioned that Los Angeles start. Him starting in his hometown on Jackie Robinson Day nearly broke him. I don't know what <laughs> happened out there, but if you remember what his next couple of starts look like after that performance in Los Angeles, it was not pretty, Jeff. That's why his ERA is so high. So no, I don't want him at the All-Star game. No, I don't want him out there potentially hurting his arm because he would be pitching with nothing but pure adrenaline. Do you know how hyped up he would be? You know, I'd be scared he'd throw his arm right off his body trying to hit 112. <laughs> no, I don't want him anywhere near the all-star game that is a bad idea jeffrey i just think i think that the talent is there and, and you know what 
Maybe I'm a little bit early. Maybe I mean we're probably yes, talking about it. It's going to be a little bit early. You're <laughs> way early. Your your season's early. No, I think I think next year it'll be an all star. But I think that he is going to be a multiple time all star. And I think maybe I'm putting the cart before the horse a little bit for him. But I honestly believe, especially his last seven starts have been so freaking phenomenal. I mean, you're talking about beautiful numbers of course he has that one start where he allowed five earned runs but he's still striking out dudes like crazy he even in games where he doesn't pitch that good like in Fenway where it was like boy the Red Sox really got up on him in the fourth inning before that he still got a whole bunch of strikeouts like the over under on every single Hunter Green start and I haven't looked at it yet today I might give a look for that here in a moment as to what his strikeout total is going to be against the Brewers today every time he comes out that strikeout total has got to go up and up and up on the over under because dude just misses bats and he's so good at pitching backwards with a 100 mile an hour fastball like i i I believe that he has the talent to be a multiple time all-star and i think that he's got an argument he he might not actually make it but i think hunter green deserves to go to la for the all-star I don't disagree with you that he's going to be a multiple time all-star. I really, I mean, I'm just, it is a bad idea. Let us not, let's not mess with Hunter's arm right now, this early in his career. Let's That's get fair. through. Now, you know what, Jeff, if he had like a sub two ERA and was just, you know, lights out every single start and, and you just couldn't not select him, maybe I would like, you know, just clinch up and watch him have an inning performance in Los Angeles and get through it. But, you know, I understand where you're coming from. And and for a lot of reasons, it would be exciting to see Hunter Green out in Los Angeles. Uh, But I don't think now is the time. I think they need to protect him from that. They need to protect him from Major League Baseball. They need to protect him from himself. And they need to make sure that he has a long, illustrious career. And you do that by moving him along slowly. And that includes these type of accolades that in the grand scheme of things really don't matter a whole lot. Uh, You have piqued my interest with a question, though. And I'm going to throw this at you. I love throwing things at you that are not in the rundown. It makes me happy to do it all the time. But let's say you got to find somebody else. And it Mm -hmm. can't be Hunter Green. And it can't be Brandon Drury. Who would represent the Reds in the All-Star game if... For some reason, they had to take someone other than Brandon Drury. Say that he was playing for somebody else when they make the selections. (laughs) Do we have to limit it to a position player? No, you can take another pitcher. You just can't take anybody that's a rookie that's a pitcher. (sighs) Well, he's a rookie. Alexis Diaz. I'm saying Alexis Diaz, he's been the best relief pitcher on the Reds. He has more appearances than anybody on this team, and he has the lowest ERA of anyone on this team. I think that he has shown himself to be a mainstay in this bullpen, at least for the rest of this year and next year. Hopefully next year he can continue to build on what he's got going on right now. We always say that relief pitching is a very fickle thing, and it's very hard to predict from day to day, let alone from year to year. But he is really building something, and the fact that he's got a brother that that I deem as one of probably the only two bona fide closers in the entire major leagues in Edwin Diaz. I think Alexis Diaz absolutely deserves a nod for the all-star game. So for me, if it's not Brandon Drury and I don't want them to take any of our young pitchers, uh, if, if you're going to scramble to find an, an all-star selection for the Reds, because everybody has to have one. So if you're going to run somebody out to Los Angeles in that scenario to represent this franchise, it should be Joey Votto. He is tagging yeah. the ball. He's hitting for lots of extra base hits. His, his numbers since coming off the COVID list are really good. They're up. Yep. So, you know, not looking at his – entire season performance but just looking at what he's done since he came back from the covid list he's the guy i send and who better to represent the franchise if you're really just looking to get somebody to to wear the jersey and represent the team Uh, if we're going to make the selection based on that then it should be joey I'll give you that, too, because I mentioned the entertainment value and the fact that Hunter Green would just absolutely electrify people watching the game. Uh, Joey Votto making TikToks at the All-Star game. I think yes, he tweeted sir. about this the other day. Uh, Joey Votto making All-Star TikToks. That sounds like a recipe for amazingness. Absolutely. I agree. Let's do that thing. Let's make that happen. <laughs> 
Let's do it. Let's 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 send Joey. And I know that there's going to be a lot of Joey haters out there that don't like this, but you know what? I don't like those people anyway because I love Joey Votto <laughs> and I believe that he deserves. But please keep all listening. of the accolades. Give all of the accolades to Joseph Daniel Votto. And you know what? I mentioned Hunter Green. He's got an interesting test because his last really bad start was against the Milwaukee Brewers. He's pitching against the Brewers. Tonight, the Reds have an opportunity to pounce on a wounded Brewers team, and I think that they can do that this weekend. We are going to tell you what to expect from this weekend series of GABP after you check out the best place to find out what to expect from a good bet at Bet Online. By the way, the Reds are plus 105 with Hunter Green on the mound tonight on the money line to beat the Milwaukee Brewers. I was trying to look and see if uh, they had an over under total on Hunter Green strikeouts. I'm going to take the over whatever it is, but I haven't seen it yet. So I can't tell you, but I'm just going to say smash the over. I think he's going to nail it. Bet online is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, news and odds, including this year's NBA Finals matchup as they're into well they're into game 6 tonight as we're recording we're uh, we're going to know who wins tomorrow hopefully there'll be a game 7 because there's no better two words in sports than game 7 but hey whatever they've got you covered on bet online for the NBA Finals for the Stanley Cup Finals that are going on that first game was an absolute lightning fest and I don't mean that because the lightning won it was electricity that's where we're going with this one electricity because the avalanche won in overtime beautiful hockey is being had in the Stanley Cup plus bet online has you covered with fighting news from MMA to boxing so much more bet online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information including live betting esports and more head to the website today on your computer or on your mobile device and check out the trends and action Bet online is where the game starts. I'd also be interested to see what Hunter Green's uh, rookie card looks like on Sports Card Investor. You got to check out that app, by the way, sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. But also make sure you're following us on Twitter because you can follow me at Jeff Carr with three F's. You can follow Steve at S. Offenbaker with two F's. And you can follow the show at Locked On Reds with no F's. And I said F's this time. I didn't say yes's. Um, and you didn't mess up with your hands. And you I actually had the right up. numbers. Yeah. And I <laughs> if you're not watching to... Jeff on YouTube just for his awkwardness, you're really missing out. <laughs> there's there's never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. And you know what? When the Reds play the Brewers, there's never a dull moment. And there is an awkward opportunity for the Reds this weekend because the Brewers come into town hurt. There's a number of guys that we won't see in this series. And a lot of them have to come off the mound starting pitching and, and Josh haters on the paternity list and things like that. So you're going to see a couple of names that you don't normally see. Now, Adrian Hauser has seen the Reds twice already, which we'll talk about him in just a moment. But the guy who's pitching tonight is a nightmare matchup for the Reds. And he's always pitched well against them. And it's Eric Lauer. Eric Lauer from the left side of the mound just shuts the Reds down and literally outside of his last start where he allowed eight earned runs on three homers. Why couldn't that be this start? But whatever, it was his last start against the Nationals. He is only allowed, there's only been two games where he's allowed more than two earned runs. He's absolutely been shutting people down. And here we go, Reds against left-handed pitching. Ooh, let's see how this one works out. You gotta, you have to think that Lauer, after that last start, you know, looked at, mapped out who his next start was going to come against and saw that it was the Reds and was just sitting there rubbing his hands together <laughs> thinking, all right, if I'm going to rebound big, baby, it's the Reds. Yeah. They can't hit left-handers first, you know? So Yeah, even when they were trying last year, they couldn't. Right. Now they definitely can't. Now they definitely can't. So yeah. I have to think he's excited about this start uh, and an opportunity to rebound. But, you know, these are the games where the Reds go out and, and confound all of us and have a big performance and get us a little bit excited. So three or four days from now, they can kick us in the balls and, and pull it all out from under us. But, you know, I fully expect that because the Reds are the Reds and they do things like that, I'm expecting them to go out and have a good performance against Lauer. I think they're going to rough him up a little bit just because that is the nature of this beast. Jonathan India leadoff home run. Ooh, look at you calling a shot. 
That'd be nice. That'd be kind of nice. I I love I love the uh, double, technically triple, but double because the Brewers couldn't field it right. That he or the Diamondbacks couldn't field it right because they're in Arizona. But I think he is back. I think he's got his timing down. Saturday is going to bring righty George Costanza. I mean Jason Alexander, Alexander. Uh, to the mound. Um, he was in the <clears> pool. <throat> serenity now uh he is going to be on the mound against uh graham ashcraft which is going to be a lot of fun to see because ashcraft really had his first struggle of a start in his last outing how can he bounce back from that that'll be a big deal alexander's a really i mean when we talk about graham ashcraft getting his career going jason alexander is so unknown this is just his fourth start ever and he's only had three other starts, and they were all this year. His three starts have looked interesting because he's allowed a total of five earned runs, but he has allowed seven hits in each of his three starts. He's got 21 hits allowed total. So I think that there's an opportunity there for the Reds to get going. Plus, he's a righty. There's something about Reds and not left-handed pitching that they can sometimes do well against. Well, you know, I'm I'm not disappointed at all to be facing the Brewers while they're a little nicked up. You know, uh, you know, Colton Wong's not in the lineup, and I'm actually kind of bummed about that, Jeff. Uh, Colton Wong, I really enjoy watching him play. Uh, I, I root for him all the time when he's not playing the Reds because um, you may or may not know this, but uh, he hails from Hilo, Hawaii, and I used to call his Little League games. So uh, oh, wow. he, he's, yeah, he's uh, he's been fun to watch since he was like 10 years old. So it's wait, it's like, been, is it an umpire uh, or were you like a play by play guy for I was, I, I announced the all star tournaments on the big island That's awesome. huh? for all those years. So, you know, he was mashing home that. runs in Honoka'a out at Hamakua during the the little league all-star tournaments, uh, you know, over the fence, 400 feet when he was 12, 13 years old. So uh, he, he was a fun one to watch. I've always rooted for him. And the fact that he's not in this Milwaukee lineup, this series makes a difference. And, you know, it's not only the pitching that we're lucking out on, you know, we've seen with Tyler Stevenson being out of a lineup, we've seen with Jonathan India and the, just the level of energy change and the way that it, uh, it trickled down the lineup and affects everybody that's still playing uh, when a player is out. So, you know, I think him being not in this lineup has a greater impact than you might just think about uh, looking at it on paper. Yeah, it's huge that he's not going to be there because I think a lot of the times he has just absolutely murdered the Reds, whether he's been a Cardinal or a Milwaukee Brewer. Whenever he left the Cardinals, I was like, yay. And then he just went to the Brewers. Stay in anyway. the division. Like, Why? Yeah. Like, go somewhere else. But whatever. He's he's a good baseball player, and they're going to miss him this series. One other guy they're going to miss, and, you know, in the uh, perfect world, they wouldn't need him anyway, but Josh Hader is on the paternity list as of right now. I'm not exactly sure how long he's going to be on that. I don't, I don't know how much time is allotted for a baseball player specifically to do that, but he probably will be back by the end of this series. Hopefully, though, the Reds uh, make it so that the Brewers don't even need to pitch him at all, or if he does have to pitch, it's in a blowout win. For the Reds, uh, last dude that's going to pitch on the mound for the uh, for the Brewers, I mentioned him a moment ago, is Adrian Hauser. He's going to start on Sunday, and the Reds have been pretty happy. At least the Reds lineup has been pretty happy whenever they faced Adrian Hauser. They've done it twice this year in back to back game or back to back starts for him, May fifth and May eleventh. And the Reds had tagged him for a total of 12 runs in those two games. Now only seven of those were earned, but still seven earned runs in two games not a great uh run there for him hopefully they can continue that success at the plate against hauser now they were one and one because may 5th was back when the reds pitching staff was still you know wherever uh but they won the second game may 11th 14 to 11 that was that game where it was like okay you're up by a billion why on earth did you give up so many runs in the ninth inning but i got a good feeling about sunday's game so i i wonder steve because <clears throat> I was right, you were wrong about the Arizona Diamondback series. Um, oh my! What's your God. feeling here? You know, I was just thinking about that, Jeff, because I'm looking at this series on paper, and I don't have to squint very hard to see the Reds winning this series. Yeah. I, I, it certainly won't be a sweep. But you know, looking at it, I could see them taking two of three, and 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 not and not 
really squint very hard to find it happening. I think uh, here's what's going to happen. The Reds are going to go out and win the first two games of this series, and they're going to drop the third game just because that's the way these things go sometimes when you're at home. So that that's my prediction. I think that the Reds offense will continue to improve. I think Jonathan India is going to catch fire, just like you said. You know, maybe maybe not a leadoff home run to start the series, Jeff. That's a, that's a pretty bold prediction, but um, I do like the energy that Jonathan India – has infused into this lineup. And I think that that's going to be contagious. Uh, I am still waiting for Joey Votto to break out. He's been hitting the ball hard. He's been doing those things that always make us think Joey's coming. It's coming. There's a switch that's going to flip here the any ball. day. He's, He's scolding the ball. That's true. And so I think that, that that switch flip, that thing that happens with Joey Votto where he goes on a two, three-week tear, I think that's coming. And I think the energy that Jonathan India has brought back to the team and back to the lineup might be the thing that pushes Joey over the top. And if, if those two things happen simultaneously, if India is hot and Joey Votto just goes to inferno status, uh, this could be a very fun series to watch. With it very much, it, 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 this would be perfect timing for Joey to have one of those breakout stretches for a couple of weeks because you got the Brewers and then you got the Dodgers right behind them. So it's it's going to be a couple of hard series right in a row. It's just good to see that you know you're getting the Brewers at a time when they're a little bit down. This is the time when the Reds need to take advantage of that, and they got to kick a good man when he's down. I mean. You know, every so often we got to do that. But I, I really don't think that this is a situation where the Reds can drop uh, two out of three and just say, well, gosh darn it, don't you know the Brewers are a solid team? It's really hard here. The Brewers, not only have they uh, been hurt by injuries, but they've also been down themselves. They've been losing a lot here recently, and they're out of first place. We're not talking about the first place Milwaukee Brewers anymore, so let's continue adding on to that. No, by the way, they win a couple, and the Cubs lose a couple, and the Pirates lose a couple, and the Reds are in third. So third place, th that's baby. where we are right now. That's where we are right now. It's 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 absolutely insane. <laughs> well, listen, Jeff, I think the big takeaway here is that this is, in fact, a very winnable series for the Reds at Great American Ballpark this weekend. And that is probably a good place to go ahead and wrap it up for today. Uh, that's going to do it for us today on Locked on Reds. Coming up on the next podcast, we will continue to dig into this Milwaukee Brewers series at Great American Ballpark and start to look ahead just a little bit to the juggernaut that is the Los Angeles Dodgers, who, as Jeff just mentioned, will be coming into town next uh thanks so much for making locked on reds your first listen of the day now make locked on mlb your second listen sully brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues both past and present the locked on mlb podcast just like locked on reds is free and available on all platforms all right jeff we're back at home. It's a nice little homestand. The Reds have an opportunity to move to third place, just like we've been dreaming about for years. What can the people <laughs> count on from us the rest of the way during this homestand? Thank you count on us to be locked on Reds every single day. We'll see you on Monday.